Welcome, welcome to the Hot Stove Society Show on Cairo Radio. We're back again. Two Yay. more hours of deliciousness. We have um, John um, Yeager is going to be here to tell us about rallying a culinary coalition for a blood donation drive for bloodworks. Uh, super important. Yes, it is extremely important. This is a very important message, uh, very dear to everyone in the community, but... Let's go give blood. We need blood, so let's go give blood, please. It's a very simple matter. You go over there, someone pokes you, and you get a free uh, something to eat. So oh. how simple a, can it a get? A lollipop. <laughs> uh, we're going to talk with John Yeager from Bloodworks Northwest. Yep. And uh, talk about the need for blood out there and uh, uh, what we can do for the Saver Life Blood Drive. Tom, you know, the last time I was in this studio was a little over two years ago. I was here for a pot sticker love class <laughs> three weeks before, before COVID. COVID hit. Yeah. And when I come back here, I, it's, it's, it feels great. It just feels great. It's, I, I, what I found with my joints as we've reopened, it's like deja vu. You, you know, we've been close. Well, here we were close for a year but, uh, for people. But like walking into Lola after 18 months closed, and it was deja vu. It was just like... Okay, let's just open up again. <laughs> I get goosebumps thinking yeah. about what you just said right there. Yeah, it's so amazing. So tell us about your, well, your blood drive and why it's so important. We were talking about the pandemic, and um, almost overnight we got hit with, uh, well, we were hit with about a 60% uh, decrease in our blood supply because we couldn't, we had social distancing. So you had to make, we didn't take walk-ins anymore because people needed the six-foot dif- you know, distance. The beds had to be apart. No more blood mobiles. No more high school blood drives. All of that stuff gone almost overnight. So we had to start looking for new ways to reach out to different communities, to different, uh, you know, a lot of young people, but a lot of communities like the music community and then this program that we're going to talk about, the culinary community. And that's why Mike uh, Salvador and I are here to talk about that because um, you've probably heard in the news about a national blood shortage. Mm -hmm. Well, it's the worst it's been in 10 years. And uh, it's just time for us to reach out to these different communities and address this. We've got about a one and a half day supply of blood right now. A few weeks ago, it was less than, you know, a day. What does that mean? Well, if I've got an elective surgery at a hospital, I can't get that elective surgery. We have to have enough blood on hand for emergencies. So if you have a shooting down, which is what happened a couple of years ago, you have a shooting downtown, there may not be enough blood on hand. And well, so, can how I do just you stop you for one second? Because I really. <laughs> We have shootings everywhere. Yeah, and people always want to put them down. down but there's shootings everywhere. I'm, a, I'm just thinking about. Yeah, you're right. The stuff that makes the headlines. And I'm thinking about Amtrak 501 a few years ago. Yeah, we, that was a big deal. We were able to give uh, 150 units blood to the hospitals in that area. I don't think we could do that today. It would be a stretch. It would t- require a lot of ingenuity and moving blood around, and a, just a, it's. Not as easy as it, it's never been easy, it's but difficult. it's difficult. Yeah. It's just, so we're in a situation now where it's an emergency. So we have to reach out, and that's uh, it, and what I call it is a perfect storm. You know, you have the social distancing issue, then, which you guys know about the staff shortages. Right. Okay. So we lost about 20, 25% of our, uh, our, our you know, job force, and now we're slowly hiring them back. But what does that mean? So if I've, we've got a, a, a donation center in Federal Way, they don't have somebody, they don't have staff for Friday afternoon. What, are those, what happens to those appointments? They have to get canceled. Mm-hmm. Then we have a number of people in the past few months that have been no-shows. Well, what happens to those, those appointments? Remember, we're by appointment yeah. only. You right. can't just walk right. in anymore. Right. Hey, I can't go. If I don't tell those guys that the 2.30 appointment on Friday is open, nobody sits in that bed and gives blood. Right. So... Um, it's been an, and I'm not, you know, I'm just saying that this is this is tough times, and we're just starting to emerge out of it. But the the way we're going to make it is by partnerships with uh, with the culinary community uh, here in town. And um, Mike, do you want to talk about how how um, our two organizations have worked together and how you've brought a number of these chefs to the table, so to speak? I owned an advertising marketing agency for 13 years. I sold it and. Um, I really wanted to give back to the community I live in, the community I love. So we do marketing consulting for nonprofits and um, different causes. When I heard about this cause, we thought there was a really fantastic opportunity to create partnerships within the community 
to make the story of blood shortage and the story of blood donation not something that was just heard as an emergency but it was heard as a community message. And Terry, you now know the message, and Tom right. knows the message. You can tell people that you know and people in your restaurants. And that's what felt uh, really important to us, is to get the message to the ground level so that they weren't hearing it just from Bloodworks. They were hearing it from you. Right. And so uh, we, did, we started this campaign last September with a music-focused uh, program where we really engage the music community to come together to help tell the story of the importance of blood donation. Um, it was a four-month program. We had a goal of trying to hit 10,000 new and re-engaged blood donors by the end of the year, and we were able to do that. Um, we got a lot of excitement, and there was just a, a lot of um, push for it. And so we thought there was a really interesting opportunity, Seattle, Portland being such a foodie community, to work with the culinary community to do that. So we started reaching out to people we know, friends that we knew in the industry, and um, the, the support has been overwhelming from Tom to Terry to Ethan Stoll to Uber Eats to Jason, 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 Wilson, Jason Wilson to Wilson. Seattle Restaurant Week. The, the outpouring of support from this community, which has been so incredibly hard hit over the last couple of years, um, has been astounding. And so our goal is to continue building these partnerships, not with just our current coalition, but to continue to grow the coalition. So any small business that's in the culinary space can be part of this message. Save her life, save a life. It's a really simple message for someone to hear, and that's what we'll be doing over the next four months. And this can spread all over the country easily. And so uh, you're asking people to come now and make an appointment yep. so that it, everything can be sterilized and be ready for them to oh, show yeah. up and yep. handled uh, properly in the era of COVID. Not that it wasn't before, but yeah. And so and then you're getting some good response. And oh, yeah. I know that... Um, it's something that I have never done other than when I wanted to get my own blood tested. Tom, you make an appointment, and I'll be there with you, and I'll get a picture. You hold my hand? I will hold your hand. Okay, good. It I, will not hurt, I guarantee you. I have one for Sunday the 20th. I couldn't find anything else. That's You're, awesome. So if you want to know more about Savor Life uh, Blood Drive, go to, to uh, Bloodworks Northwest, and you can find out more about it and make an appointment. It's just like uh, Pam and I are going to do, aren't we, Pam? We're going, yes. we're going together. I'll go with you if again. you'll have us. I'll be there to hold your hand. All right. When we come back, <laughs> we're going to continue with Mike a little bit uh, and uh, the blood drive uh, and talk about uh, 58 Stars Food and Wine Tours, which, Chef Terry, you are uh, leading a few tours there. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, on Cairo, it's the Hot Stove Society Show, 97.3 FM. We're back in the Hot Stove Society kitchen. Thank you for staying with us. Hopefully during the break you made an appointment with uh, Bloodworks Northwest uh, to give blood of, during the Saver Life campaign. Chef Terry. Um, yes, I have an appointment. Good. Mike Salvadori is here. He's talking about uh, not only Saver Life uh, blood donations, but also the food tours that you guys are, are part of. And I'm curious, and I know Pamela was curious, we always talk about, hey, Terry's giving this blah, 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 but we don't really know, like, where do you get on the boat? What do you do when you're on the boat? How do you get off? Uh, actually, actually, so just so it's clear, this is not the boat. This is actually just a regular trip. Oh, this is a tour tour. This is not a cruise, like on the oh, river. This is actually, I thought you were going on the river soon. I am, but that's a different company. I mean, I, Mike is oh, a nice guy, but uh, well, I, knew, I knew someone else before him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, the tour that I'm doing on the Rhone Valley in, at the end of May is with Northwest Travel, which is a ah, local... See, I was confused. Yeah, see, our listeners must be totally confused. And it's with three winemakers. Uh -huh. But the tours that I do with 58 Stars is what I actually do all the time, which is the trip that are customized, that are small group, 14, 16 people, where you can actually sit around the table in any restaurant or any place you go around the world... And you can actually have a conversation when you're taking a walk through the streets. If somebody wants to stop, it's not a big deal. You know, when you're with 100 people, you can't do all that. But this is very customized and very friendly and very tight. Okay. So you actually become very close friends with all the people on board, uh, you know, who are uh, on, the, on the trip with you. And 
It, the cool part about this is it's totally customized. So okay. if we feel like going to this market, we go to this market. If we want to go see this chef and have a cooking demo, we go see that chef and have a cooking demo. You want to go for a camera? What about if I want to sleep in? You want to sleep in? It's <laughs> us, actually, we let you sleep in if you want to. There is no, you know, there's no pressure of like, oh, we all got to be at 9.47 in front of the bus. Yeah. None of that. Yeah. It's all very cool and very relaxed, yet very fun and entertaining. And uh, all the people on board, since there is only 14 to 16 people on those trips, they're all in for the same reason. They want to have relaxed, good time, good food, good wine. You know, they want to experience. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's what I think it's providing. So yeah. did I do a good job marketing that? You did a really great job, too. Did I take your job over? You took I do? my <laughs> job over, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and one of the things that um, really drew me to this industry after I sold my, my agency, a uh, marketing agency, a few years ago, was that, um, you know, travel is kind of in all of our blood, no pun intended, but it, it really is. But the way to travel is to travel in more custom crafted, more curated experiences. So many people will go to a tour and there'll be one of a hundred people that go on a tour in a city and it's not the way to really explore and enjoy that city. So what we wanted to do is create customized, really crafted experiences that made you understand the community and the destination a little bit more. You got to meet with chefs. You got to meet with um, some really beautiful behind-the-scenes um, vendors or farmers or partners in those markets so that you felt like you not only were just seeing the destination, but you were part of the community. Mm -hmm. um, you were meeting people on the ground that were part of the community. And so when we started working with Terry... It was to create working together with him to really figure out what things were in his mind as to where he wanted to go and what he wanted that's to see. That's a hard part. <laughs> Very hard part. Very that's, hard a, part. that's a demented place. <laughs> <laughs> but we pulled it out of him. <laughs> and when we pulled it out, we've been able to create some wonderful trips to Australia and Tasmania, to Morocco, to... We've been to Vietnam. We've been to... And we're going in 23 to Ireland, Portugal, and then 24, India, South Africa. So there's all kind of different plans, you know, and it all starts with, where do you like to go? Where would you like to go? Uh -huh. And you say, well, you know what? I, I'm actually from France, but I've never been to Ireland. And it's such a beautiful country. You hear so many things. And then you watch Belfast and you're like, yeah, I want to go. <laughs> And then you get to talk to Terry along the journey. I mean, how, you how think amazing the, can you that be? You think the Irish accent is strong? Watch mine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a really great opportunity to see a destination in a new and different way with someone that you respect and you yeah. admire and being able to ha hear them communicate with um, those chefs in, and um, on the ground as well. So um, we do a lot of these. You can, you can check us out at 58starstravel.com. We're on Instagram at 58starstravel. And um, you'll be seeing a lot more as we go into 23 because, of course, this industry was also hit really right. hard by COVID. Yeah. But it's really started to come back and people are just itching to, to go away. Yeah, I think there's going to be a little spring that's going to bring a lot of people out because... Once we just say mask off, I think people are going to start flying everywhere. I sure. just was booking tickets to Scotland. Uh, I belong to a golf club in Scotland. And when I started looking at tickets uh, maybe six weeks ago, they were one price. Now they're literally double the price. Mm, yeah. uh, oh, my God, yeah. You go to Scotland, yes. Yeah, so. Well, I mean, not, don't forget the fuel prices are going up. <laughs> Well, that's, that's for sure, but that's not why. I mean, there's just more people traveling. Yeah. More people traveling. Yeah. This and summer is going to be very busy in Europe. Uh, it's and less plane flying, too. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, demand, demand. So, yeah, good place to be. Airline schedules changed dramatically over right. the course of the last couple of years. And so, you're right. There are less planes flying. And so, that means the prices go up. But, yeah, this summer, um, travel in Europe will be very busy as people really try to get back to a bit of normalcy. And, um, you know, there's a lot of really safe and um, healthy uh, things that they've done uh, over the course of the last two years to kind of streamline the process of travel as well. So um, I think it's a really great opportunity to start thinking about travel, thinking about it in new and different ways that feels a little bit more connected to that space versus just seeing what everyone sees mm -hmm. because that's not really the way to explore. What you really want to do is be able to explore in a little bit more in depth. Yeah, I think that's... What's, what's the, the favorite thing, Terry? I mean, 
the way I think about your trips that you do, you're you're off to this market, right? You maybe did some research and you picked out a market that sounds good. Do you have any idea when you head into the market what you're going to cook that day? No. Or do you think that it's so? Because that's hard for 15 people. Right. It's hard to just well, be. Well, we don't, we don't do cooking. Like, it's not the way, like, I don't go every day to the market and do cooking for everybody. You don't cook a dinner for us? No, 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 no. <laughs> I mean, not, not on a skew like that, no. Unless it's planned, yes. Like in Cusco, for example, when I was in Peru, I did this cooking for the group for 17 mm -hmm. people. I thought I was going to die. The elevation was so high. I was in the kitchen going, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> What is going on here? Nobody warned me about that part. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I perfectly know. I knew what was going on. I was just, it was rough. It was like, you know, it's like. Well, that uh, makes a difference. And if you don't have to. But we went to the market. We, you know, I bought everything there. And it was really fun. It was a very fun experience. That's what I like. I like to be, I'm like you. I like to cook for people. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's a fun thing to do. But not all trips are actually based on that because okay. some trips are a little bit more complicated uh -huh. uh, but going to restaurants is definitely one of my passion as well as you <laughs> right. you know there's nothing wrong with going to have someone else cook for you and really enjoy the differences of and do you discuss and, it as a group and you know usually usually we have it pre pre-ordered you uh -huh. know like uh, you know we said we say okay so we have this this trip and then we have these restaurants that we're going to go to and places we're going to go to and wineries we're going to visit and And all that. This is all, all before you, f you start flying, yes. And so people definitely know what they're going to be up against. And, you know, they're all on board because otherwise they wouldn't be signing up. Exactly. All right. If you want to know more about all of that sort of thing or the don't forget the Bloodworks Northwest, 58 Stars Food and Wine Tours is the name of that. Take a peek. I mean, nothing's really set in stone at this point on your schedule. But uh, if you want to keep an eye on that, uh, Chef oh, Terry... Sign up for the newsletter for sure. John, thanks again. Thank you, Tom. Uh, John, thanks thank again you. For coming I'll be from there to hold your hand when you donate. You know <laughs> that. It's a promise. Well, what I really need is like a, some fried chicken or something it, while I'm giving it blood. It doesn't hurt. Yeah. You'll <laughs> love it. it did you, it'll be great. We just dingle a little piece of bacon <laughs> right in front of your face. I just face. need a carrot. <laughs> not that guy. My carrot is fried chicken.